There's been quite a bit of chatter about the newer nine speed transmission, similar to what's in this Honda Pilot behind me. Uh, it is a ZF9. Uh, a lot of talk about how good they are and a lot of talk about how bad they are. So I've had several people ask me my opinion. So let's get into it. The ZF9 transmission is actually not specific just to Honda. Uh, it's used by Honda, Acura, uh, Fiat uses it, Chrysler uses it, uh, Land Rover uses it, and I think even Nissan uses it uh, in one of their SUVs. So uh, it's, uh, it's not just a Honda thing, it's, uh, it's a transmissions they, they've outsourced. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of good and there's some bad. Uh, this pilot behind me. This is actually mine. Uh, 2016, it was one of the first years. Uh, this is a, a touring, I believe. One of the first years that came with this transmission for Honda. Uh, I actually purchased this vehicle from one of my clients with a bad transmission. Uh, they were on the fence if they wanted a new vehicle. So as soon as we diagnosed this one as being bad, uh, that tipped the scale and they went and bought them a newer vehicle. I can't remember what they bought, but uh, uh, this vehicle came into us, uh, had about 137,000 miles on it. Uh, customers concerned was it made some crazy clanging and banging and then no, would no longer uh, accelerate. Uh, we pushed it into the shop uh, and it just wouldn't shift into gear, it would just rev up. Uh, had some kind of internal failure. Uh, we didn't take the time to take the transmission all apart and find what part failed. It had uh, terrible looking fluid and all kinds of crazy noises. So I knew it was going to need a new one. So we just outsourced it, ordered one from the local Honda dealer, put it in, updated the programming, and uh, it's been good to go. One of the reasons why I think this one failed, uh, it was the first time customer to us, so we hadn't been servicing it for them. When we looked up in service history, we couldn't see where it had ever been serviced. So they went 137,000 miles on the original fluid. I have a pretty good feeling that that's likely what led to its demise. You know, fluid breaks down over time. If this would have been my vehicle from new, I would have serviced it at about 50,000 miles and then every 30 after. So now that this is my vehicle, it is getting serviced religiously every 30,000 miles. I suspect I'll never have to buy another one. But let's talk about this ZF9. Uh, why, did, uh, why did Honda and many manufacturers start using this transmission? Uh, it's very efficient, uh, it's pretty compact, and, it's, uh, it, and it can be programmed to, uh, to get some pretty good fuel economy. With having nine gears in such a small SUV, it's just kind of always in that sweet spot of RPMs. Uh, one thing that is kind of uh, unique to this transmission is it uses uh, kind of original friction style clutches, but it also has a couple of dog clutches. Uh, so dog clutches are basically kind of two synchronized gears that kind of sync up and lock together. So they lock in solid, very similar to like a manual transmission. Uh, why that's a benefit is two gears locked together there's just way less energy loss with just the normal friction plates trying to hold pressure together. So if you think about what a transmission is, it's basically just a big hydraulic pump that the engine is spinning and it's compressing fluid and runs through a series of other things inside there to propel the vehicle. There's a lot of energy loss in that process. So the more direct we can get things locked in, to where all the power from the engine makes it to the wheels, uh, the more efficient it is. So those dog clutches are actually a big reason of why this uh, transmission is unique and uh, economic uh, for fuel economy wise. And then it also uh, eliminates some extra clutch packets and stuff. So it actually allows this transmission to be pretty compact. Uh, for nine years being in there, it's actually a fairly small transmission. It's a pretty cool design actually. Um, so that's the pros. Uh, fuel economy and it being compact are the, are the biggest pros. The negatives we're getting out of it is just with the style of, of a mix of those two dog clutches and the normal friction clutches, they do have kind of a weird shift. Uh, specifically, I think this one, I think as it's downshifting, downshifting to eighth and downshifting to fifth, it just seems to search and it just feels a little funny. I suspect it probably um, utilizes the dog clutches on one side or the other of those gears. So it's probably it coming in and out of there maybe has a little bit of a delay. 
So they do feel a little bit funny. Um, there's been concerns of a high failure rate. We've replaced some, but I don't, I don't think it's high. You know, it's high for, it's high for Hondas. You know, if you're, you know, all of us old school Honda guys are used to not buying transmissions ever. Um, but with the demands of uh, cafe standards we're always talking about and all the manufacturers having to fight for every little thing they can to, to meet those government standards of fuel economy and emissions and lightweight, uh, they have to experiment a little bit and kind of go outside of their comfort zone a little bit. So for what they have against them, uh, they're still building a good vehicle and this transmission uh, I don't think it has a high enough failure rate to be scared about it. Uh, there was a few year span, uh, I think 16 to 18, uh, that had some pretty good issues. But honestly, I think the number one issue with those is uh, Honda's programming was off a little bit. So as we installed this transmission, there was actually, I think, a third update of the programming to just change, change shift points and stuff. and. Uh, uh, it seems weird, but that seems to be what's solving. Whenever we're seeing a lot of high failure rates in different components, there's usually a software update that comes out, hopefully soon enough, that actually fixes the problem. So overall, I think they've, uh, they've got them pretty well dialed in to where uh, not only would I recommend, you know, just buy one, but uh, I, I drive one, you know. Uh, I loan this to customers, so who knows what they do to it. Hopefully they treat it better than I do, but not likely. Uh, and it'll be just fine. So once again, uh, my, my final uh, thoughts on the ZF9, the Honda Automatic 9-speed. Uh, it's got a couple flaws, but for, for the most part, uh, I'm pretty impressed by it. Uh, uh, only thing you gotta do is, uh, what, if you have a new one, service it at 50,000 miles, and then I highly recommend every 30,000 miles after that. I know if you look it up in Honda's guide, they say every 50 to 100,000 miles. Uh, fluid's a lot cheaper than a transmission. So I, all, I would say I'd risk paying for a couple extra fluid exchanges than risk going too long and damaging a uh, transmission that's you know, probably what, a five to $10,000 repair. Uh, and then honestly, the good thing about Honda uh, is they're finding, uh, finding good reasons to not move their SUVs to the CVT style transmissions. Uh, I could do a whole other video we actually have about the downfalls to CVT. So, so good on you Honda for finding other solutions and not moving us all uh, to a CVT until you absolutely have to.